let's talk engines. I had a 2.8 bottom end with a billet crank and it was it was third hand maybe and I knew there were some issues with it but it would have been good if I could have could have used it so I got it all checked over and everything but the centre main had a crack in the oil journal so that was the crank in the bin and then I thought oh well if I can still use the rods and pistons then I can get a crank and it's still kind of better than building a 2.6 and I can just about justify it and then I saw that some of the tops of the pistons had got valve marks on I won't tell you why they weren't bad I thought oh, I can just about limp that through it will be alright just put a crank on it um, and then two of the little ends were a little bit loose little end small end whatever you want to call it mate I just started to look at it and thought right every component is kind of over really isn't it so it changed my plans a bit so I was going to build that it was going to be a group A car with a really kind of more up to date engine in it a 2.8 with a single and a dry sump because the money that I saved getting the 2.8 bits I could put into other parts of the car now all of that's in the bin so I'm going to build close to a group A engine with with a couple of minor tweaks so it will have hate section rods in rather than the standard ones that they used and I've ordered a sign drive oil pump from Garage D the, the, the pump that I took out of the 2.8 was a Jun pump and the gears had cracked in half I'll show you when we're next building the engine stuff so it just kind of worried me and so um, that's that's the plan and then chuck twins back on it and I'm kind of I didn't want to do it because it wouldn't it would be a bit harder to run and it wouldn't be quite as competitive but now I've been put into kind of the corner of having to build a Group A engine for it. Um, I'm actually happier, I think, because the whole it'll all be right, apart from the suspension bits. It'll all be perfect. So, because I'm not dry sumping it anymore, I need to do the sump modifications that the Group A cars did. And no one does this because you don't, do you? So this is why I just walked in with two sumps. There's actually three sumps down here. I'll show you that one in a minute. We've got a sump off a... I actually bought this sump and then an engine came with it, which is a touch. So we've got one sump off another car, and then the original sump off my car. And what the Group A cars did was they cut the, the bottom big bit off one sump and stuck it to the bottom of the other one, so it just extends it downwards. Whereas kind of what you do, what most people do these days, they put like a big wing jobby on, which is cool, and it's better, but it's not what they did. They ran, what, 10 inch slicks front and back on the Group A cars and proper roll centres and they came out alright so I think if I do this I've got some images of what they were like and how they were baffled and the Viton flaps and things like that inside. So I'd like to make one sump like they did which hasn't been done since and then with the other one I'll be able to put a big wing thing on it and then flog it and then I might be able to get close to finishing the car. This is the good sump, and the the idea is they cut it around here. I think so. Just just skim the old bottom off, and then imagine they cut there on the other one, and then stuck it somehow. I mean, we'll figure it out. Let's get towards steps. First step: clean this dirty one. I have actually been doing stuff. I haven't just not been filming, I have not been filming, but I've been, I've been doing all the rear bulkhead parts in Alley, um, but I just didn't want to listen to a lot of Radiohead, just wanted to... Someone's had one of those days where they do something tight and then it goes loose again, look.
So I've got a couple of books. Shall I tell you what the books are this time? Because otherwise everyone just wants to know what the books are in these. This is... That's what that one's called. I got this one off Yahoo Japan. There's loads of them on there all the time. The other one... The other one is that. And I got that off a friend. So... Yeah, I don't know where you'll get that one. It's really good though. It's actually the only... It's the only book with a picture of how they did the baffling inside, like how they did the flap and stuff. This is some geezer rebuilding an engine, but as my mate Al pointed out to me, it's actually a Group A engine that they're rebuilding. But it's got H-section rods, so they must have replaced that at some point. It's basically exactly what I want to build. And in it, they've got, they've got the sump on there. And it's only, I've, I've only ever seen it on Group A cars. Probably because you need, they're, they're quite expensive sumps and you need two of them to make one and it's no benefit over putting a big wing sump on so it's probably worse anyway <coughs> so this is the this is the vibe we're going for hopefully you can see that i don't know what this camera does half of the time so i need to cut cut here get rid of the middle boy and then then we'll see what it looks like on there shame marked it all out wasn't interesting didn't film it um it's, I think it's just 60 mil down that they did, and then it's straight across the front, straight across the back. Cut here, get rid of the middle boy, and then, and then we'll see what it looks like on there. That's all cut out. I also had to, they cut this centre section out, so I did that on both sides and then I've gone over it and kind of ground back some of the casting just so it's clean metal. Later on I'll, I'll wire brush over that so it's clean. I just had to bring a, a block here, it's a scrap block, but it's, it's flat on the bottom. So I can bolt it all up to that and then it should stop it from kind of warping. Uh, yesterday I just had to run back and get an oil pump as well because it kind of like, kind of holds the front down look and because Welding quite, I don't know, will it will it move? I'm going to get everything I can back in the sump, so I'm going to put the diff in there and I'm going to put the kind of quill shaft in there. Just so, I don't know, it's as held as, as good as it can. I guess all I'm worried about is just where the diff bearings are, maybe moving a little bit. But we'll see, we'll just have to go with it with me. It's worth mentioning that cutting the top off that, although it looks really quick, it did take about three or four hours. So if you do end up paying someone to do this and they're like, oh, there's a good kind of five, six hours of fabrication in there, they're not lying. So 
have to take all of it back off now because you're supposed to drill out these oil oil holes. There's some little return holes here that are, I don't know, like one and a half mil at the moment. I'm pretty sure it's ten, but I don't know. So I have to take the whole sump off again, drive home to get a book that says what hole size it is, come back, drill them out, bolt it back on, and then four hours later we'll be back where we were before. Twelve mil. Glad I checked. I'm glad it wasn't what I thought it was, otherwise that would have been a really pointless trip. get to the side ones otherwise you just drill into the diff. not drawn by itself in this temperature. a good metaphor for the current build budget.
There we go, still turns. There we go. I'd call that a, a mild success. I don't know whether to tidy it up more inside. I did that with the diff case and then it just kind of warped a load. The, the welds are pretty substantial. So I think she'll be okay. I'm gonna save the I'm gonna save the baffling for either another one or I'll just do it. Um I'm gonna put this down. I wouldn't recommend it much better just putting a kind of normal type extended sump on but it's correct so I'm happy and it's good fun doing it for anyone wondering the front plate on here is 6082 T6 so if you were to drive that into a speed bump it's either going to take a chunk out the speed bump or take the engine mounts out so the sump will be okay I think I'm going to fill it with marbles or something see if it leaks maybe some sand and then if it's all good, yeah, I'll crack on with the um, I'll crack on with the baffle. I think the next one, obviously after the sump, is going to be the dashboard. So, seeing that one.